Welcome live inside Extra Mile Arena. Jay Tuss alongside Brady Frederick, the Boise State men's basketball team, hosting 18th ranked Utah State, looking for an upset. Unfortunately, they were unable to close out against one of the best teams in the country today, Brady. Yeah, first place in the Mountain West standings on the line today. One of the things that we saw as things didn't go Boise State's way, some uncharacteristic mistakes, mm. some turnovers, some missed free throws, some poor shooting from the field. Maybe you look at that with optimism in the sense that that's something that you can fix and yeah. it's not always going to happen, but why don't we dive inside and take a yeah, look at like what you, exactly happened? Like you said real quick, too, it all just seemed to happen at inopportune times. To the highlights we go, again, Utah State visiting Extra Mile Arena. The Broncos had lost two straight against the Aggies, but, well, Boise State looking to get back uh, right against one of their rivals, I would say, in the Mountain West Conference. A slow start early on. Utah State starts on a 7 nothing run, but then Max Rice gets it going. A step back three is good right there. Now, once again, as we've been saying throughout the season, Omar Stanley was a difference maker energy-wise and scoring-wise. He threw down a pair of nasty dunks to elevate the crowd. It's one of the best crowds I think we've seen at Extra Mile Arena this season, by the way. He would finish off the night with 20 points in the game, continuing to kind of shift the momentum in Boise State's favor. This was a tight game throughout the half. Max Rice would also provide a little bit of an offensive spark, making a few huge buckets. But check out Tyson Dagenhart attacking the rack right there. He had a game-high 24 points in the contest. Yeah, and he shook off a slow start to get there, too. He only had three points in the first half. He didn't have his greatest scoring night on Tuesday when they took on Fresno State. But in the in the back half of this game, I mean, he turned it on, got a great three-pointer to fall right there, and was one of the guys who, who was really making things happen. There's Max Rice, like I said, reloading the three, knocking it down. We head to the second half, and, well, this one just really a back and forth battle, but a chance to close it out at the free throw line for Omar Stanley in a two point game. He misses it, and Ian Martinez pushes this thing all the way up the floor and makes a layup to tie the game with one second to go. And Roddy Anderson's last half court heave comes up short. It was a lot closer than I thought it was going to be right? for, a, for a full court shot. It looks pretty good. But we head now to overtime, and Brady, you could just kind of feel the steam let out of this place at that point. Absolutely. I mean, the, the depth really got tested. BSU looked a little bit tired, and Utah State came out with a 6-0 run to start this one off. I will say, Boise State was able to regroup. They were able to fight back. Tyson Dagenhart made things very interesting with a three-pointer that he nails in the final minute of the game to get this one within two but in the end of it Boise State unable to hold off Utah State's hot start in overtime USU would go on to win this one 90 to 84. There's no pressure it's just uh I mean every game we're going to win you know this, the, the, our approach is the same no matter what but you know this is a a league where you just got to go try to find a way to steal one somewhere you know and that that you know that's our mindset and who knows you just keep sawing wood and you keep fighting and show up the next day have a great practice and away we go and um but it doesn't add to the pressure there's you know i mean four losses will probably win this league maybe three and i bet it won't be three you know, you look up at the scoreboard and you see the Boise State put up 84 points in a conference game. That rarely happens, but in this case, there were just some inconsistencies throughout the day for them offensively. Yeah, I mean, you to this, the number that stands out to me, 26 for 65 from the field as a team. That's not something that they're going to hold their hat on. We, we've talked about it. They're going to shoot better than that in most games. So that's something that you can take a look at. But some of the things that are also upsetting, you know, the, the missed opportunities, the missed free throws. Mm -hmm. That wasn't just Omar Stanley at the end of the game. It was throughout the entire game, Boise State was struggling from the free throw line. They missed eight on the day. Right. After the game, though, it was Omar Stanley and Tyson Dagenhart talking about those missed free throws and some of the incons inconsistencies that ultimately doomed them. Yeah, you know, that's that's it's really tough, you know what I mean? And I'm really uh, hard on myself about that, you know, about just little things like that, you know. Um, but I know, you know, I know we'll, I'll bounce back. I know we'll bounce back. Uh, I don't think we did. I think we had some good, really, really good stretches. And, um, you know, after, right after that stretch, we'd have a really bad play. And uh, we just couldn't find that consistency offensively and even defensively. You know, we had some pretty bad defensive laps, even on my part. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to watch those and correct them. 
Brady doesn't get any easier. Three of the next four, they go to New Mexico, Air, Air Force here, and then they got to go out on two on the road for two more ranked opponents. I mean, it just does not get any, easy, any easier for the Broncos. That's the silver lining of how talented the Mountain West Conference is because you have a soul-crushing mm -hmm. overtime loss against a rival. Well, you immediately get the opportunity to bounce back as yep. you take on another great team. As Leon Rice said, after you lose at home, you got to go steal one on the road. We'll have more coming up tonight. In the meantime, the news at 5 will be right back.